I am Dr. Paul Chima of the Department of Public Administration, University of Abuja. I'm here to take you on the course titled Nigerian Government and Administration, Pop 211. The following are my profiles or information about me. The title of the course is Nigerian Government and Administration, Pre-Credit Unit Loads. Like I told you, if you want to access me, you can use my official email. My phone number is there. You can meet me between the hour of 10 to 4 for consultation. The general overview of the course. Uh, this course gives an overview of the nature, structure, and operation of government in Nigeria. It's expected that at the end of this lecture, students will have good foundation about public administration. And secondly, it will help the student to analyze public administration problem and prospects in Nigeria. If this course is completed successfully within this semester, students should be able to make comparative analysis of pre-colonial and pre-colonial administrative system in Nigeria understand the colonial pattern of administration in Nigeria, discuss the Nigerian government since independence, identify and compare the features of the Nigerian administration at the federal, state, and local government level. They should also be able to know how to improve the federal state administrative relationship. Students should be able to suggest ways to improve the Nigerian civil service. And at the end of the lecture also, they should be able to evaluate the working of the Federal Civil Service Commission. And finally, lecture eight, they should be able to uh, highlight some of the issues that are constituting corruption in the Nigerian public administrative system. Following is the grading style of the policy. These are the course rules. You just have to abide by them as a student. Then the lecture one proper. Lecture one is titled Pre-Colonial Administrative System in Nigeria. When we are talking about pre-colonial system of administration in Nigeria, we are talking about the system of administration in existence in Nigeria before the coming of the Europeans into the country. Before the coming of the Europeans into the country, there existed an organized, organized administrative units in the various regions of the country. For the purpose of this topic, we are going to look at three tribes and use them as case study to discuss the pre-colonial administrative system in Nigeria. The first one is the Fulani tribe. We we'll look at the historical background of the Fulani. We we'll look at the political administration and then look at the judicial system of administration of the Fulani tribes before we move to the Yorubas and finally the Igbo. A cursory look at the historical background of the Fulani shows that there existed, there existed Hausa Kingdom before the, uh, the Fulani Emirates. But due to the holy war led by the Ottoman Danfodio, the Hausa Kingdom were conquered in the process. And after they were conquered, a lot of reorganization took place in the Hausa Kingdom. And one of them is that all the Hausa rulers were replaced by the Fulani uh, Emirs. The Hausa Kingdom were also replaced with Emirates. And two headquarters were created for the Emirates. And the headquarters, one is in Sokoto, the second one is in Gwandu. So this is the brief historical background of the Fulani tribes. 
Now, the political administrative system <coughs> at the headquarters, just like we said earlier, the headquarters is located in Sokoto and Gwando. And if you go down the ladder, under the headquarters, we have the Emirates. The Emirates, uh, they were headed by the Emirs and his council of advisors. And the major functions that they perform is they make sure that they regulate the economic life of the people. How do they do this? They do this by levying taxes on the people. And secondly, they make sure the, the emirs are regarded as a political and a spiritual father or spiritual leaders of the people in the emirates. Those, the council of advisors that assist the emirs in the emirates, some of them are called the waziri. The waziri is the, 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 the head of the officials in the emirates. We have the madawanki and we have the galadima. Sarikin Rua, Sarikin Fada, they are all council of advisors to the Emir in the Emirates. And when you go down the ladder, you discover that we, the Emirate is divided into districts. And the districts were headed by Hakimi and his chiefs. The Hakimi and his chief, they are the ones that man the district. And under the district, we have the villages. And these villages were headed by village heads. And their own responsibility is to levy taxes and maintain law and order. So there is a hierarchy of authority or relationship, or authority relationship here. At the headquarters, we have the emir of the, the, at the headquarters in Sokoto and Gwand, we have the overall emir. And then at the emirates, in other states, we have the emirs who are reporting to the emir of Gwandu and emir of uh, Sokoto, as the case might be. Then the district heads, who are called the Hakimis and his chief, report to the emirs at the emirate level. And then we have the village. The village heads report to the district head. So that is the hierarchy of authority as obtainable in the northern part of the country. The judicial administration is also hierarchically arranged, as can be seen here. At the Emirate level, we have courts that were presided by the Emirs. And the major issue they treat at the Emirate level are criminal cases. So the criminal cases are not handled by the other lower judicial systems. So beneath the Emirate Court, we have the Akali Court. And the Akali Court does not go into criminal cases. It settles civil cases, e.g., cases that have to do with marriage, divorce, debt, inheritance, etc., are some of the cases that the Akali Court handles. So it doesn't handle criminal cases. Then the village had also a part of the judicial system in the emirate. And what they do, they settle minor civil cases. And criminal cases at the village level are referred to the emirate level or to the emir via the Alkali court. It means that the Alkali court serves as a linkage between the village heads and the emir. What is worthy of note is that the basis for judicial administration in northern Nigeria was the Islamic law and the Sharia law. So there was no constitution of any type, but the basis of judicial administration, what they used in making their judgment, was the Islamic and the Sharia law. We are done with the Fulanis, who, who reside in the northern part of the country. Now we are going to look at the Yorubas. The historical background of the Yoruba shows that the Yorubas migrated from Egypt. And when they migrated from Egypt, they first of all settled in Ileife. And they settled under the leadership of Odudua. Odudua is regarded as the father of the Yorubas. They later moved to Oyo, 
And when they moved to Oyo, seven empires were created. The seven empires created were occupied or were manned by the seven sons of Odudua, as can be seen there. Due to inter-kingdom war among the seven uh, seven kingdoms or seven empires, the seven empires were further broken down into 14 kingdoms. The 14 kingdom was under the lordship of Oni of Ife. When it was seven empire, it was under the lordship of Alafin of Oyo. Finally, the new kingdom, which was the 14 kingdoms, acknowledged the Oni of Ife as the spiritual father of the Yorubas, no longer a laughing of Oyo. So they regarded Oni of Ife as the father of the Yorubas. Then what are the political administrative system there? The political administrative system there is very simple. At the headquarters, we have the Oba and his senior chiefs. Their responsibility is to make sure that they tackle social, political and economic problems and try to offer solutions or proper solutions, e.g. if they are to conduct war or uh, carry out war between their community and another community. That is the responsibility of the Oba at the headquarters. They also try, when they are admitting a stranger into the community, the Oba and the senior chiefs take, uh, take care of that. Then we are along the ladder, down the ladder, we have the district. We have the district. And the district were manned or supervised by the senior chiefs who uh, administer the Yoruba kingdom with the Oba. So the senior chiefs are the heads of the districts. And they report directly to Oba. Then along the line, if you go down the ladder, we also have the Bale. The Bales are the heads of the subordinate towns and villages. So the district heads or the senior chiefs serve as a link between the Oba and the village heads or the subordinate towns. So they were the, the ballers who reside at the subordinate town pay tributes. They call it Isakole. I'm not a Yoruba, so um, let me not murder the language. The pronunciation is Isakole. They pay this annual tribute to the Oba. And they don't go to the Oba directly. They must pay it through the senior chiefs. And the senior chief will take it to the Oba. One thing that is very unique with the Yoruba administrative system here is that there is a system of checks and balances. The Oba cannot make any policy without consulting the chiefs. By custom, the chiefs are not supposed to go and hold one-on-one -on -one discussion with the Oba. What they rather do is to come to the frontage of the Oba and take their decision, pass the decision through the messenger of through, through Oba's messenger to him. And the Oba will issue corresponding decision to them. And they will go to their various districts and implement. And that is why we say that to a large extent, the, the pre-colonial administrative system in the Yoruba land was partially decentralized. But it is worthy of note that the appointment of the Bale is subject to the approval of the Oba. If the district head appoint the ballot, it is not the final. The Oba must give final approval to it. That is the political administrative system there. Then we have the judicial administrative system there. Just like in the northern, uh, northern part of the country, the Oba and his senior chiefs, they take care of the criminal cases. They treat criminal cases. Cases like murder, cases like burglary, and so on and so forth. They are within the jurisdiction of Oba and his senior chiefs. Then at the town and villages headed by the ballers and the chiefs, they also settle minor cases. Senior, uh, serious cases are referred to the headquarters. That is the Oba's uh, palace. And another judicial uh, instrument used in the Yoruba system, pre-colonial system of administration, was the age grade. The age grade are the ones that implement 
the judicial decision of the Oba. Whatsoever decision that the Oba has taken, it is the age grade. The age grade are called in Yoruba language, the Legbe. They are the ones that implement the Oba's judicial decision. Then we have the Igbos, which is the third tribe that we are going to discuss. Historically, the Igbo reside in the eastern part of the country. One of the fundamental features of their system of administration is that there is no centralized political authority. It means that the authority is shared among many people in the land. You cannot identify a particular person and say, this is the political authority holder in the Igbo land. So authority was shared among the people. Who are those people? We have some people who call them the four title holders. We call some also title holders. We call some the age groups. The four title holders are the most senior uh, male uh, persons in a family. The other title holders are the wealthiest ones, the wealthy uh, men and women in Igbo land. So uh, what... How does the political administrative system of the Igbo look like? If you look at it critically, you discover that the basic political unit in the Igbo political pre-colonial system of administration was the Umana. The Umana there means family. The Umana there means uh, family. And a group of family put together produce what we call the kindred. And a group of kindred put together give us the village. Now, the, this, every decision that is taken at the village level by the Council of Eda is not final. It must go back to the respective family. If they accept it, then there will be a feedback from the family to the village councils. So, the village council cannot impose any decision on the villagers. It must be taken back by the respective of four title holders or the senior persons representing his own family. He will take the decision back to the family and the family will look at it critically and then they give the feedback to the council of Eda at the village square. So, you discover that the system of administration in the Igbo land was more democratic because it allowed people to participate. Note, the other title holders, who are the rich ones, also wed political uh, authority. Sometimes, apart from the Umana, the Kindred, and then the Council of Elders, the other title holders are very relevant in the Igbo pre-colonial system of administration. They are the worthy ones. They are the rich ones in the Igbo land. So they also command some level of political authority. So when some vital decisions are to be taken, they are usually consulted. So the system of administration there is called gerontocracy because it is the government that is based on the elder or the government of the elders. The judicial administrative system in the Igbo land the judicial administrative system in the Igbo, Igbo land is not conferred on one particular authority. If you look at it very well, you discover that the Council of Elders also make law. Apart from the Council of Elders that make law at the village level, villagers come together to make law via informal discussion. And whatsoever law they make via the informal discussion, is binding on everybody within the society. The chief priest also administers justice, especially on offenses that is against the spiritual deities. If the offense is against the God of the land, it is the chief priest that administered such judgment. The judgment must be carried out by the chief priest. So the chief priest is also considered as one of the elements that is used in the judicial administration of the Igbo pre-colonial administrative system. In summary, 
It is evidence from our <clears throat> discussion that pre-colonial administrative system existed among the various regions in Nigeria before the coming of the colonial master. However, there was a complete absence of centralized political authority in the Igbo society. If you are comparing the Igbo society with the other tribes, that is the Yoruba and northern part of the country, the Fulani, or the Hausa system, the Hausa a pre-colonial system of administration, there was no centralized political authority in the Igbo society. So what we had was a decentralized system of political authority. And in the northern part of the country, the administration was highly centralized. Whereas in the, east, in the southern part of the country, that is the Yorubas, the administration was partially decentralized but was completely decentralized in the eastern part of the country. And that is why we don't have a centralized political authority. Self-assessment exercise. Examine the similarities and dissimilarities in the system of administration of the three major tribes in Nigeria. Thank you. <laughs>